Uh, we just recently hosted a white party. Um, and we have a Crab and Splash Fest coming up on August 14th at the Broadwater Mansion. It's going to be dynamic. I bet. Now, I've been to a couple of um, fellas parties, and I've had a great time. So, definitely, is there a website? Where can they Yes, get they can check us out on the web at www.thefellas.org. Okay, sounds good. So, back to you. I know you're in school. You're always in school. What is the, you love school, <laughs> learning and teaching. Yes, um, I have been in school practically all my life. Um, I graduated from Morgan in 2005, mm -hmm. and I went back to get my master's degree in 2007. And actually, this summer, I just finished up the requirements to become an administrator in Prince George's County. Hey. So, and I'm looking to um, apply for my doctoral program this upcoming spring. So what uh, what do you see? Because I know you're somebody that is looking ahead yes, and indeed. planning. What do you see? Where do you see yourself at? Give me in 10 years. In 10 years? In 10 years, I plan to be um, an established principal in the county. And I want to focus on staying in Prince George's County because this um, county has given so much to me. So I want to be an established principal in the county, um, closing the achievement caps, making AYP, make, um, closing the test scores amongst the other counties in Maryland, and just make sure my students are succeeding. But ultimately, I would love to be the superintendent of this great county as well. Tell me and let us know, what are the challenges? I'm a mother. Um, mine's is just going in the first grade what are the challenges right. in the public school system and more importantly what can we do about them the number one challenge is, mo is, is basically uh, motivating students. Okay. You know, um, we as teachers, we have no idea what type of background our students come from, but that doesn't matter. My, 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 my number one priority is to motivate and encourage these kids to, number one, walk across the stage, um, across graduation. So when they come to me, all I see is the graduation stage, and I want to make sure that I could do everything that I possibly can to make sure they walk. So the... Um, the number one challenge is, them, is motivating them and mm -hmm. getting them to see the vision that you see for them. Okay. And how can we do that in the community? And in the community, I believe in the old saying, each one teach one. And okay. it, it takes a village to raise one child. Mm -hmm. So if everyone comes together, if you come out to the PTA meetings, if you come out to all the school events, if you be supportive at the basketball games and the football games, and even in your child's classroom, mm -hmm. trust me, it goes a long way because it gives them that uh, motivation and encouragement that they need, not only from the teachers, but from their parents, from their peers as well. All right. I'm just so mesmerized by you right now. Oh, I'm proud of you. Thank you. No, seriously, you. I am. That thank was a lot of great information, and I'm so happy that you came here today and shared such, again, you said you wanted to do it. I mean, we, I was a knucklehead at Morgan State, and you were focused, and you did it, and you're doing great things for our community, great things for our kids, and I hope that you stay focused and you continue. I know you will. I, I appreciate that. And well, thanks for having me. And it's, it's an welcome. honor to be one of the first guests on your show. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back to you. Left a good job in the city. Working for the man every night and day. But I never lost one minute of sleep. Worrying about the way that things might have been. Big wheels keep on turning. Proud Mary keep on burning. And we rolling, rolling, rolling on a river. All right. I know you do. Thank you very much, so much. I left the United States government in what some folks describe as a recession to pursue my passion and live the life that I knew I wanted. And most people thought I was making a horrible mistake. For some, it seemed so sudden, so drastic, so irresponsible. However, those that know me know that I march to the beat of my own drum. And I do what I want to do. I had a great experience at GSA, and I will remember that time I spent there forever. I became a member of the International Speech Club, Toastmasters, and I sung in the GSA choir. Those experiences really cultivated the seeds that were already in me, speaking and singing and entertaining. However, life is about constant elevation, and I didn't feel like rising spivey. I felt like complacent spivey. I was settling into a life that didn't really satisfy me at all. I made a decision that I am so proud of. It took me a lot of guts to walk into that room and tell my boss that I was leaving. And everyone's first question was, well, what agency are you going to? 
I couldn't even explain to government people that actually I just wanted to be a better mom. My child was growing before my eyes and kindergarten was a learning curve for the both of us. I realized how our schedule and me working in D.C. affected us and I just knew that I didn't want that anymore. I don't want to rely on my family to take her to school every day. I knew I wanted to eat breakfast and dinner at the table and that that wasn't going to happen if I stayed in that rat race. I knew I wanted to be more involved with my daughter. I wanted to make sure that my daughter was a great student. I see so much of myself in her and I did horribly in school. So I dropped everything that seemed important to everyone else to do the things that are important to me. I don't know where exactly this role will take me, but I am already enjoying the journey. And since I made that decision, God has truly blessed me. I only applied to one job before I left the United States General Service Administration. One job. I put all my eggs in that basket because I knew that that would be the job I get. Why? Because I always wanted that job. I've always wanted to work with animals. I love animals. Somewhere along the way, I lost sight of that dream, but I saw the opportunity and I took it. And sure enough, I got that job. I am now a client service coordinator for a prestigious hospital right here in Bowie. Today was actually my first day in my new position. Amen. Today is a big day for me, you see. Now, you might say, oh, Chanel, you can't do that. That's irresponsible. You don't quit a job before you actually have one. And I say speak for yourself because I do what I want to do. And the only person I work for is God. And if I so choose to report to work every day for pay, it very well or it better be for something that I want to do. I mean, how many hours can we give away in order to just get by? And that's what I felt like. I felt like I was just getting by. I was making a nice chunk of change for a sister with no degree. But I didn't feel like I could afford a vacation, a new car, or any of the luxuries that I see people with. Not that I need those things, but I woke up at the crack of dawn every day and embarked on an hour-long commute to sit in front of a table and a computer and do a job that I could care less about. So, yes, I left the federal government in the middle of a recession. I kissed my guaranteed paycheck and benefits goodbye because I knew that if I was faithful, God would take me to where I needed to be. And that wasn't the first time either. When I came into the government, I was a contractor. A good friend of mine introduced me to a company that placed me at GSA for a two-week contract, just two weeks. And when I took that contract, I quit my full-time job with no notice. That's right. They called me and they asked me to come to work the next day. I was in property management, and I left it for a two-week contract. Why? Because I wanted to. And because I knew that if I did what I needed to do, God would put me where I needed to be. And I put all my eggs in that basket, and I stayed faithful. I got to work early every day. I went above and beyond the call of duty. I knew that there was no way in the world that I was not going to get that job. I was a perfect worker. I was always upbeat, always positive, always willing to help others. And they extended my contract a month. And then they extended another two months. And then they extended it one more time before they actually hired me as a federal employee. You see, faith can carry you any place that you desire. You have got to believe in yourself. And so here I am now hosting my own television show, doing something that I've always wanted to do. And I know that God will continue to bless me. There's nothing that he will withhold from me because I walk uprightly. And I want to encourage you to remember that your dreams can come true if you believe in yourself like I believe in myself. Don't let that light inside of you die. I'm a single mother struggling to finish school. And do you think that that stopped me? No. I use that as my ammunition. Someone is counting on me to be victorious. My daughter doesn't understand the sacrifices that I have made for her now. But I know that one day she's going to look back and say, wow.